Okay, so what we have here are the Artisopa Series D dry brushes. We've got a set there. Um, one of the unique things about the set is the damping pad. Um, we don't think people are dry brushing quite in the right way generally, or maybe lots of people aren't, and there's a few accepted norms that we've questioned this product. So basically, um, the reason that dry brushes are the shape they are is because in the watercolour industry, fine art industry, flats exist and they kind of look like the type of brush you might want to use to paint texture, which is exactly what we did with like when people came out with high quality Kalinsky Sable brushes, they took just took absolutely like pristine pointers from watercolour painting in small sizes and they were perfect. So I, I think that's probably why it came around. Um, they're not the right shape though, they're wrong. The dry brushes should be round and the brittle should be soft, not coarse, and you should have a brush that rather than dying because you've pushed it in this way and it ends up fraying. You want something where you use it from the side in, in lovely densely packed fine bristles that are soft and all of that abuse is being pushed into the densest part of the brush where it's the most resilient. Um, you also want it to exit paint smoothly, softly um, and with kind of like a global effect which is an example of it. So the reason we know smooth blends, people are asking if it's airbrushed, you've also got an edge highlight going on. That's all been done with a brush of this size, start to finish in about probably 10 minutes throughout the course of the demo uh, that I gave, which is on video, we've got a bit of a square actually. So, and we're going through this process now. Um, so we've just got two colours of paint. We were doing moistening my brush here. If any of your airbrushes, you probably put thinner in before you put paint in. Um, and the reason for that is to help lubricate the brush, help the paint exit faster. This is exactly the same concept. And then I always paint on a texture palette for this type of thing. You need to know before you put your brush on your model how things are going to behave. And that's the reason. Um, First stage is the stipple. Never really going to need. This is not going to look very delicate at all, and the reason is because it's not. When you're painting, so, some of you may or may not know, um, stippling actually goes down a lot. Dry brushing in general goes down a lot better on top of other dry brushing or stippling. Um, even if you've primed your model, primer is as it's like the primer, but you need something with a bit more bite to pick up paint more adequately. So if any of you have primed a model, you've gone straight to a heavy dry brush or open brush and then done a layer on top of that and you've knocked off your previous your previous work, often that's because you've not built up a, like, a layer of priming that is suitable for, for dry brushing in time. Okay, so I'm going to imagine my light source is somewhere around here, coming from the top right. A little bit more white. Test it on the palette, on the back of your thumb. You want to be picking out the creases if you are using your thumb. That's about right here. I'm going for a fairly extreme one because it might show up on camera better. And also, it's kind of interesting to see how far the technique can be pushed. It's the same as I would try and paint this one. You can go super pristine smooth. Uh, it's been twice as long if you like, it just depends what you're doing, what speed you're going for, how much time you have, how much patience you have, that type of thing. But, so we've, we've put down the stippling, we are still dry brushing it at all stages here, we need to put down some foundations, however dark they are. So, here we go. Currently, I swap brushes now, so I'm going to one that's got less dark paint on it, to moisten it. If I lick it, I'm not meant to, and it's the dampening pad, but I've been painting for a lot of years. Okay, remove most of that. Remove it in all angles, because we can use this brush from all sides, and we intend to. Firstly, that's very light, right? We start now, and this is where we start getting the magical. The magic yeah, happening. Like, they're a lot more robust yeah. than people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're literally actually going like in there. Um, <laughs> nice dry brushing, pretty much with immunity. This one's going back there for more moisture. I don't need my paint. Um, if you dry out your brush and you're using a, 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 a piece of paper towel or something like that, all you're doing is you're making your paint less helpful. You are removing it, but you're drying it out and you're drying your bristles out as well and that's going to lead to chalky dry brushing stop it from being beautiful and smooth so we're making sure that our brush then a lot at of no our point in this process is parched yeah. moving it in all directions you'll hopefully be able to see from how it's behaving on my finger the moment it stops streaking we're good to go I'm holding my brush fairly far back as well that'll help you have a softer touch and you do, you do not need a hard touch with these bristles. Stippling completely different, but when you're dry brushing, 
you know, delicate, that was a point tight point. grade, you got, you got, it's you got a ghost pure, just use that uh, it's not a blend, yeah. so now we're going to stick and be a bit less gentle, but any of the, the core stuff we got in the earlier stages, we now get to fix pretty so much with immunity, because we've made sure that too much paint isn't leaving the brush, so this kind of top right, brighter effects we're going for here, light sourcing and push, Go very gently right? here. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Can so I have a look at one? Get yeah, back yeah, pretty much to the final stage now. Oh, Make sure oh, that the yeah. spare yeah. rush is nice yeah. and moist. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. 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 Okay, I'm leaving more on the brush than I had in the previous stage, but not that much. Because I want to hit every edge here. I'm going extremely gently. You should be able to see that picking up the bricks individually. Yeah, nice shape to the top. There we go. Um, so I'm going to dab it So we, we have it with no guard because then there's no thread or anything like that. So this, this yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah. 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 Start to finish. You can even that saturate your copper so in, we, we in we airbrush right. cleaner. Right. And it's just with the look at these parts. That's really cool. So, so awesome. yeah. the, the other question I was going to ask is obviously I've seen one of these again. As far as cleaning goes as well, um, this brush is already been used. The process of cleaning and painting is barely any different with dry brushing, so it's all about removing paint off your model. So I often do this on the base of my model, on the sand, but if I've got something else, I've just got down some pre highlights for free now in this area. Yeah, that's the main thing. So everything from one day to three days. The fastest dry brushing you've ever seen. It's all over the country. We're sort of dates when it's coming up. We're about to get water. Obviously, we've got the brush soap. You can use that if things don't really messy, but between, between colours, generally speaking, you'll see how black these bristles are at the end of this. Just the time. Right. I would say so. And it's everything from super simple. Right. Sprues available as well. I'm not sure how easily this will show up, but we are pretty much all but clean there. And that's just from water. So that's just a natural part of the painting process. And that's also aided by the fact that we're adding water rather than more paint, and that helps everything extra the brush easily. What's, uh, what are the brushes made of? Uh, so they are finest grade. Hair, and I'm not going to tell you which one, okay. but they're not goat hair, uh, they're not, um, sorry, boar hair, which a lot of people have been talking about. That's what uh, traditionally has been used in dry brushes, it's quite coarse. Um, it's, uh, if you were to exaggerate and zoom on it, it's got quite a jagged edge and it's also brittle, so uh, it dies fast, it holds on to paint and doesn't want to let it go. Um, and it's really so What's the sort of expected lifetime of, of, of a brush? Uh, if we're talking about um, a 40k or a fancy arm, it's kind of an easy, easy way to go. Like, if you're using terrain, that's what we're talking about. As far as an army goes, if you're going to dry brush every single model top to bottom, we're talking about three quarters of an army to one and a half armies, depending on the level of the use and how much you change the okay. colors. Okay. And the paints you use as well, um, metallics and foundational base paints will be a lot bit more heavy. Brilliant. Byron, thank you very much. Cheers.